Hi, I want to do an introduction to isometric drawings in AutoCAD. Uh, now, isometrics are the most common type of pictorial drawing that's used. Uh, what they allow you to do is basically taking a 2D drawing, but give it the appearance of a 3D drawing. And I would call this uh, fake 3D. Uh, we're still learning the concepts of look at the view, having three different depths here, X, Y, and Z, or in this case, our, how wide, how tall, how deep it is, and still keeping the 2D, the X and Y part of that uh, as part of our backbone of this. Um, as we get into this, we're going to learn some basics of it, how to set up AutoCAD, uh, how to dimension it, and how to create isocircles uh, in this uh, new way of doing this, in isometrics. Uh, the term isometrics means equal measures, which is nice because if it says it's the line is too long, you're going to draw it too long. If the line is five long, you'll create it that long. There's nothing to convert or anything to have to change in any way. You just do it as it is, as it shows it, uh, as we get into those. Um, we'll flip over to this PowerPoint. There's a little Google Slides for you. And start off here with the first thing here. Like I said, isometrics is a fake 3D. Uh, it's not, you know, look here to the right of this, this is an isometric drawing. It has the depth, looks like appearance of a 3D drawing, but still just a flat 2D drawing. Uh, and like I said here, all measurements are true to size. Uh, there's a couple different ways to set up isometrics, and I'm going to flip over here to AutoCAD and show you, first off, Here's a group of isometric drawings that we have. Again, you all have depth to them. We've been used to looking at you know, some orthographics where we're just looking straight on at them. Here they're set on a 30 degree angle to see this. And it's a set angle that we use, set uh, degrees and stuff we'll get into. But if I took this object and I actually rolled it around, it's still flat, just like a piece of paper. It's just been drawn on there. There is no depth, true depth. This is still just a 2D drawing with the appearance of 3D. Here's one of my CAD 2 houses that's been drawn up, where this right here truly is a 3D object. We can spin all around, we can look around and see inside of it. And that truly is 3D. Again, we're just doing a fake 3D of this. Uh, that's a good pictorial drawing, good way to show, represent what the object looks like. Now to set these up in AutoCAD, we have a couple different ways of doing this. Um, you can type in DS, which is for drafting settings. And if you type in DS, uh, you'll get a box coming up. And in that, we will get to our isometric snaps. Now, in doing that, let me show you here. I'm going to keep like drawing up. You can type in DS Enter. Go to Snaps and Grids. And right here, we're set to rectangular snaps. So we're Think of rectangular array, just rows and columns, left, right, up, and down. That's how we're set up now. We can switch this to isometric snaps. And hit OK. And you'll see right away your cursor has changed. No longer the you know, straight on plus. Now you have a green and a red line. And it's all set kind of on an angle. That's one way to set it up. Uh, a faster way, this is something they added uh, just last year or so in AutoCAD is down here in the status bar. And right down here in the status bar, we have an option that says isometric drafting. And we click on that button, and that also turns it right into it. One click, turn it in, you click on again, that turns it back to rectangular. So that is a quick way of doing that. If that's not found on your status bar over here in the customization, you can uh, go through and add that check that so it adds onto your list uh, down here. So that's a new feature they added a couple years ago and it makes it a little bit quicker to get switched back and forth and get into isometrics. The important thing is once we get into isometrics, you stay in isometric mode. You don't, AutoCAD will create this and set these angles for us. If you're trying to work against it, it's going to be a lot more difficult to get around. So you want to have AutoCAD do the work for you with this. So here I've allowed me to set into isometrics. And 
most important thing once you get this set up is F8 must always be on, or should always be on. And F8 we know is, is our ortho, our ortho for straight, but this sets it so it stays in those snap modes, those snap directions that AutoCAD is going to deal with. Now, we are used to, with F8 being on, we can only go in four directions, you know, left, right, up and down, or 0, 90, 180, and 270 degrees. Well, in isometrics, there's not four directions, there are six directions. So we have six angles we're going to be, need to be familiar with. Uh, now, two of them you are aware of, uh, the 90 and 270 straight up, straight down. That's the same as it is in rectangular, as what we're used to. The new ones here are 30 degrees, 150 degrees, 210, and 330. So notice, there is no left and right, there is no zero, there is no 180. Everything is already set onto that 30 degree angle, and AutoCAD does that for us automatically. This is why it's important to make sure you keep F8 on pretty much at all times while you're doing this, uh, so you don't drift off of these set directions. Now another thing is, we don't have to use polar coordinates to create this. AutoCAD is set up for this, and we can toggle through these directions. Now, once we have set this up, our new kind of best friend here, once F8's on, we're going to be using F5. Now, yes, there are six directions are given us, but they don't give, they still just give it to us four directions at a time, and they allow us to use F5 to toggle through those directions, so you're not uh, set into so many at one time. Now, using F5, it toggles through, you can press it three times, and we have a our different ISO planes. Our ISO planes, we have ISO left, ISO right, and ISO top. And using F5, that will toggle through our directions. Now, there are some exceptions to this as we go through, and you'll see not everything's going to be set in those six directions. And what those are called is non-isometric lines. Uh, we'll be able to get in here a little bit how to create those. You want to create everything that is isometric first and then use uh, those to help us create our non-isometric lines. Now to get a little familiar with actually what's happening here, if I pull up back to AutoCAD, right now I've got switch into isometric mode. I'm going to make sure my F8 is on, ortho on, and as I start drawing, you'll see it's already set to these angles. In this case here I can only go down this way, up this way, and I can go up and down. If I'm going to try to create, say, a, a cube, a one by one cube, I'm going to go down one, just like we're used to doing, type it in, what direction you want to go in, over one, up one, back over one. So there to create the cube, just as if it was thinking if it was flat, 2D is what we're used to, it's just now it's already set to the angle we're trying to draw it as an isometric. So I didn't do anything different, still just draw it just like day one. We learned how to draw, point and, point and click, point and click, point and draw. Now here is where the F8 comes in, or F5 comes into play. I am right here, and I want to make this cube, I want to go this direction, out this way. And your first instinct is saying, well, it's not let me go that direction, it's not let me go back this way, what I'm trying to do here. So your first instinct is to turn F8 off. So I say, oh, now I can go that direction. And that would be the worst thing you could do. We don't use F8. We can leave F8 on. We use F5. F5 is our toggle. We'll press F5. And now it switches to that direction. You actually see your cursor change. It lays down. And now I'm on what's known as isoplane top. You'll see it actually say right here, isoplane top. Now I can go this direction and type in 1 again. Back this way, 1. Back this way, 1. So I'm starting to create this cube. Last step here, I want to create the right side of it. Back same situation here, I can't go down. And again, you don't want to press F8, you press F5. Now I can switch directions again. So I can go down one, and back over one. Now I was able to create this cube. A uh, good showing of this, is back in here, in this chapter resources, down a few pages, it's right here. And they have the same thing with a cube, and they have ISO left plane, here our 
right and your top isoplane. And you can see, we can always see three sides of our object. And in this case here, iso left, our iso right, our iso top. And again, all we're using is F5 to switch between these directions as we do this. So get comfortable with doing that, being able to switch your planes, make sure you're not hitting F8, leaving F8 on, using F5 now to toggle your directions uh, to create. Now back to our going through here. I'm going to skip over ice circles for now. We'll come back to that uh, in the later segment. I want to get into a little bit with dimensionings real quick. Now, we are familiar with linear dimensioning, and we're also familiar with line dimensioning. Well, a line dimensioning is what we're going to be using um, mostly in isometrics. Remember, a line dimensioning follows from point to point, not left to right or up and down from point A to point B. It actually follows the angle of the line. And that's important because we don't have a whole lot of straight lines left to right in isometrics. So if I go back here to this, my one by one cube, and I wanted to mention this. If I go up here and I'm using my linear, it'll work for my up and down. See, I get one. But if I try to mention from this point here to here, which we know is also one, I'm getting either 0.5 or if I go upwards, I get 0.866. That is not correct, and I would not accept that. So we got to use a line dimensioning. Now a line dimensioning will actually follow that angle. So I truly get one. It still works here. I still get one. I still get one. So a line dimensioning is what we're going to be using as we go through and create this. Um, just like in orthographics, we don't want to have over dimensions. I don't need to dimension every little line. If you're able to understand what's happening, you know, in this case here with this cube, all I would have needed, again, is just these three right here. I know my height, I know my depth, and I know my width. Uh, we're using these three dimensions right here. So using that, I can use that to uh, dimension my drawings. Now, I'm going to stop there and the next well, next uh, video I'll pick up, I'm going to talk more about how to actually approach these drawings and how to add uh, non-isometric lines and isocircles into our drawings.